Hi everyone, I'm Basant and welcome back to our machine learning podcast where we're diving into a lot of the technical details behind a lot of the cool trends that we're seeing within machine learning and AI. Uh, today I'm super excited to be joined by Changrong and Feng Lu um, and uh, if you would want to give us a quick introduction uh, before we dive into discussing synthetic de data generation. Hey folks, so this is Changrong. I've been uh, I'm a I'm machine learning engineer in Samanova, and we've been working with modal adaptation, uh, domain training, and uh, uh, synthetic data for a while. Hi, everyone. I'm Feng Lu. I've been joining Samanova for a little bit about, about two years. So I've been working a lot on like data preparation pipelines and data, synthetic data generations. Um, happy to be here. Awesome. All right. I, I, I mean, you guys are definitely the right folks to talk about this topic. So uh, why, why don't we start with a, a little bit of context setting first of, of just generally, before we dive into synthetic generation, what, what we're seeing in the market uh, around models and uh, the need for kind of fine tuning. Um, and Chang, if you, if you want to dive into uh, explaining why, why uh, fine tuning models matters, uh, let's start with that. Synthetic data is kind of a, nowadays a little bit buzzword and uh, I guess folks see this in more anywhere, but maybe we really want to think about like why we are like uh, sort of like lean on the concept of synthetic data in the first place, right? So um, synthetic data is basically um, where you have, uh, you, you artificially sort of synthesize the data from the, uh, either from uh, un unlabeled data sets or you create the data by themselves. And the reason we really want to lean on synthetic data is because um, we all know that with all of these neural nets, right, with all of these, you know, uh, uh, advancement in these technologies in transformers, etc. cetera, um, if you train a model, if you train the transformer models, if you train these neural nets models in this Gen AI era with the right data, with the right distribution, with the right quality data, you can get a really, really good results. But we also found that um, for a lot of uh, the long tail distribution of the data, or we found, let's say, for a lot of uh, enterprise or for a lot of um, very specific use cases, you cannot just have enough data to solve, to serve your task, um, to train your model sufficiently, right? And with all of this being said, um, people are thinking about, okay, I have the capability to train this model to, uh, you know, be performed really, really good on my domain, uh, but I cannot have that data. So that's the reason people are looking for more data labeling and more high quality curation. And because of the high price and a lot of times with the privacy concerns and with the expertise of the uh, annotators, people cannot just do this with, um, you know, you cannot just say kind of like people to generate a million more, I don't know, IMOs level math problems, right? So that's the reason uh, we're, we're talking about the synthetic data where you'll be able to have the recipes that you can generate that data um, that will be very similar to your targeted domain, to your targeted tasks. It can be, you know, math, can be coding, can be biomedical, can be financial. Um, and with all of this data be generated that mimicking the same distribution with your real targeted downstream task, the model can be augmented tremendously on that path. So you can fine tune the model that to be customized and to be used as your model. That's a great overview. I think we see a lot of people also uh, concerned about the fact that uh, synthetic data might might harm these models um, and and might not um, not not give the best performances and accuracies. So Feng, do you, do you want to just touch on? why uh why synthetic data is is kind of equally as valuable as as as, as real world data and, and can still be used to uh create more and more accurate fine-tuned models people's concerns are reasonable because sometimes when we generate synthetic data it might be of different distributions it might be biased um, because of how we design the generation mechanism it can also didn't have like a lot of variations or didn't touch on like the long tail distributions. Um, however, as we were like experimenting with different generation techniques, uh, we can like continuously improve the um, our design of how we generate the synthetic data. We would like do iterations of like model evaluations and see if it does the model performs well on the real world distribution. So that will help us um, like going back to look at 
if we are missing anything in our generation pipeline, if we need to consider more variations. So I think with iterations, that does help us like create better generation techniques. Also, um, we will consider mixing like real world data into training pipeline as well. So that kind of balance in how the model sees if um, the data comes in with like synthetic data or it's like more uh, real world scenarios. I know that your work involves in for synthetic data generation, your work involves in, you know, partially, let's say, rule based approach to generate the data. And also you have the large language model augmented ways to generate the data, right? How do you see, maybe describe this to the audience? Like, what does that mean for these two approaches? And uh, sort of like the pros and cons for these two approaches, like when will I should use which one to, you know, for my recipe? These are the two main strings of how we get synthetic data. So first is purely rule based or happily rule based, but more templated kind of data. So essentially we design how uh, we want the data to be generated, what kind of formats, for example, in terms of question and answers, or um, for example, how we get our initial like data structures uh, that can be templated. Um, the other route is through more free-formed um, language model-based generation. Essentially, you can gather like a bunch of prompt and then you uh, prompt the language model to get the answer, or you can give it, for example, like a raw corpus, like a text kind of um, data. And you ask the language model to, for example, give you a list of QA pairs. Uh, that way you get kind of like instruction tuning data uh, based on the raw data. However, this is like more free formed. It is harder to control the type of data you get out of the uh, model generation. And so people also it's... worry about hallucination maybe. Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely <laughs> true. So uh, there are a lot of things you need to, for example, deduplicate or like fact check after you get the um, data generated from the language model. Um, these are all like details that should be taken into consideration when you design the uh, entire pipeline. That's great. And and can you also talk about uh, how you choose models and and, and how, how that might impact accuracy as well? Oftentimes when we generate synthetic data, we want to choose like more powerful uh, language models that are uh, first of all capable of like knowing for example, the world knowledge and also understand like the instruction that you give it. For example, you want the um, model to um, generate certain type of questions and answer pairs, then the model should be capable of like um, understanding all these instructions. So a less capable model is it, harder to achieve that. Um, and then when you do like fact checking, maybe let's say um, after the model gives you like synthetic data, you want to uh, make sure the mod uh, the data has like equally good quality as real world data, then maybe you want to do like a model judge, like language model judge to compare the data quality. Um, I think the model should also be like uh, capable uh, in doing that. Another point that I'd like to dive into is right now we've, we've talked kind of pretty theoretical but I, I'd love to dive into also how can we, um, what, what, what are those use cases that we've seen where our teams have actually uh, leveraged this and, and been able to, to showcase an improvement in, in the model's, model's capability? Because I think that'll dispel a lot of the worries that um, some folks have even asked me uh, when it comes to uh, whether or not it, it is possible to distill information from these larger models. We actually using synthetic data heavily, right? So it's kind of, um, there, I think the, um, it's really kind of, a can be a really powerful tool, right? Because, and it has really a lot of great metrics, uh, uh, characteristics, right? So think about with synthetic data, when you are just creating these, all of this data, like either from the, you know, like non non labeled data or from like from the air directly, right? So um, you have minimal or no concerns about privacy, right? You don't need any, you know, thousand or, you know, like tens of annotators to, to see your data. You don't worry about their expertise, right? You should be um, very good with all of these kind of privacy concerns. Um, also, um, you can sort of like iterate really, really fast, right? Because, you know, if, if, if you see some of these, um, you know, recent 
uh, 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 human in the loop uh, iterations, right? It's gonna be taking you know like weeks or even months for you to collect a new round of data, right? Uh, with synthetic data creation, um, basically it's very powerful and very quick, right? You can just uh, you know one click the button, you can you know try a new uh, uh, try a new orchestration of large language model judges to help you filtering the data, deduplicating the, the data, cl clustering the data, or you know you can just generate using new, let's say, new approaches uh, overnight, right? You can get fast, you can get good volume, but at the meantime, we also are paying a lot of um, effort to understand how to how to basically play this carefully, right? There are many pieces you can get things wrongly, right? There are pieces, let's say, if you get a synthetic data, which is, let's say, um, they're of too narrow the distribution. Uh, I think this is what happens in one of our uh, table understanding experiment that, right, that Fono can maybe also chime in as well, where we found out if your synthetic data generation is overfitting to a very narrow or you know relatively narrow distribution, then the model might be really, really good, like 100% accuracy on that very narrow task, but the, generaliz the generalization ability is actually getting hurt, really, right? So we have to infuse more diversity into the data to making sure the model sees you know, enough variance, right? So these things are something we're also kind of paying a lot of attention to, right? It's a powerful tool, but you have to play this correctly. And that requires indeed actually a lot of practice and failure and you know iterations, right? Because they are not like, I mean, theoretically it can just work, right? So um, with all of these kind of applied research in general, this is kind of the true truth, right? Where you have to try it and you understand how good or bad this can be. Awesome. Uh, this has been a really great chat. I think a lot of great information shared. Um, and, and I think, as you just mentioned, uh, developers have access to a lot of these open source models with some <laughs> of a cloud and, and they can use it for, for a lot of these purposes around, uh, fine tuning, uh, their own models. Uh, and I, I think that's, that, that's an amazing resource for the community. So appreciate your time in, in, in sharing all of this knowledge with the community and, uh, you can, you can catch us in, in our next, uh, our next update, uh, for, for this webinar. So thanks so much everyone and, uh, tune in for the next one. Bye.